I'm going to ask everybody to put in their questions. I got a couple right now. So queue up your questions for Simon. We'll ask him anything or ask myself and, and we'll go from there. Ross, the man says, uh, Rob, stop advertising coin ledger as it does too many mistakes. You're going to pay more on your taxes because that stupid app, your money. I love, I love, I love the, I, I love the criticism. I welcome it. So here's the thing, Rasta, talk to me about what specifically is going on, because guess what? Tomorrow we're going to be going live with the guys from Coin Ledger, the CEO and uh, David Kemmerer, or one of the co-founders, and also their CPA and their tax lawyer. So you can ask them all these questions that are coming on. So put it in the comments. I'll ask them or just come back tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. And we'll go over that. Uh, hello from Portugal. What a treat to have Simon on. You said it. <laughs> it's a good treat. So I remember that that uh, we got together for that uh, that Twitter Spaces with the uh, Celsius squeezers. That was a good time, right? Oh boy, they, that, that's been the bane of my life for the last <laughs> um, eight months. But they've really, you know, um, helped me to check, and uh, you know, we've accumulated. We we got to the final point after eight months, where I was like, okay, the examiner reports out. Mashinsky is officially a scammer, a fraudster. You know, he manipulated the price to sell. He enriched himself. Um, there was massive manipulation. They didn't have the licenses. There was misrepresentations the whole way. Um, and still, no, I thought we were just going to rely upon that, but they still found a way um, to make this all my fault as well. <laughs> it's always, well, you get, man, you got to, there's always got to be a scapegoat, brother. That's how it goes. <laughs> well, so. if, if it gets creditors back a better result and, and I've got to be the scapegoat, then, then fine, I'll take that one. I'll take yeah. the hit. Let's see. Oh, here's a good question. If, if you're in the U.S., uh, do like I did and move to a crypto-friendly country, the pros outweigh the cons. Because Simon, well, Simon, you're in the U.K. You guys are pretty pretty friendly over there. Oh, well, I, I used to live in the U.K., but um, in our business, we had to move to Hong Kong in 2015. Ah. Um, we spent three years changing securities laws in the U.K., um, and after three years of reform, we got the whole um, retail investors can invest in equity and Bitcoin companies. That took us three years to achieve. And then they said, it was 2013, you can only deal with UK businesses and UK investors. There was no, there was blockchain.com. That was the only one we could find. Um, there was few UK businesses and a few UK investors. So uh, we actually had to relocate to Hong Kong. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't live in the UK anymore. I live in the, the Isle of Man um, which oh, just has a very, f life is simple for me. Um, I'm not saying it's right for everybody. Um, but in the Isle of Man, you just have this thing called a tax cap. So you just pay one annual fee, no matter how much you make, no matter how much you earn, um, what? eat your heart out and do whatever you need to do with your Bitcoin. Oh, what? Say that again. So you like, it's just one fee for everybody, no matter what you earn. Yeah. So my tax return just consists of. Um, paying an annual fee, a tax cap, um, which you don't, you know, that's the maximum oh, okay. amount of tax that you pay and you just pay it every year, one fee, um, and uh, you can earn and, and, and make as much as you want. Holy smokes. So everybody remember that. Hong Kong, Isle of Man, not a bad place to go to. All right. Yeah, the problem is, is if you're American because uh, Uncle Sugar wants to uh, keep you in America no matter where you go. This is, well, this would be the thing. I think you'd have to renounce your citizenship. That's the Puerto Rico thing, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Puerto Rico. I mean, at, at, on Puerto Rico, at least there's, you know, that's where we live is uh, you still you still have to pay federal taxes, but you don't have to pay uh, capital gains tax, depending on how you do it. Act uh, Act 60. And then um, there's some different provisions and things to pay for. But in all in all, it's not bad. I mean, uh, Peter Schiff lives here. So, you know, how bad can it be? All right, yeah, so this, yeah. is, this is Kiata Coder asked a, a, a good question. Uh, U.S. citizens wanting to trade on exchanges outside of the U.S. legally is the approach to get a second citizenship, or do you have to renounce? I have no idea on this one. I don't. I just use Coinbase these days, and uh, that's it. I don't know if you got any insight. Yeah, but I can say it, it's an interesting question because um, you know, for at Bank to the Future, it doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter. Um, it's the residency of the individual customer or the investor that counts. So as yeah. soon as we take on a U.S. investor, you know, we have to comply with SEC regulations in that transaction, whether we're um, abroad or not. But you as an individual, if you want to get outside the protections of the SEC, 
uh, it's it's a tricky thing to do in America more than anywhere else. I know some countries they have wealth taxes and exit taxes and various other stuff. Um, but America is one of the only countries in the world that no matter where you live, they want to keep you American forever as a tax resident. Yeah, they love you to death, to death, as long as you pay your taxes. Also, guys, I forgot to, to make mention of uh, if you're looking for Simon Dixon's channel, I put in the links in the description. Actually, actually it's like, like the first one, Simon Dixon video, which will take you to his channel. And again, he did this really good breakdown of the stable coin attack and the things that we went over just in a lot more detail, a lot more concise without me interrupting with uh, questions. So go check that out and his channel. And I think this comes down to, I think this is the last one. We normally get oh. a question from someone saying they hate my clocks. That, that always comes. They, they hate your what? Your clocks? They hate my clock and lamps and think I'm a, a Saudi Arabian um, king or something, a dictator. I I always thought, like, like some, like, I think when I first saw some of your shows, I'm like, I always thought that you were like a James Bond villain because you had like some really cool <laughs> stuff in the background. And then like, yeah, the ocean. So that was pretty cool. Here's a question. What's going to happen to BUSD? Does it only apply to U.S. customers? Because as I understand it, the SEC is saying you can't, to Paxos, well, it's the Paxos who issues it. And they say shut it down. And they're going to let, allow them until February 2024 to redeem. Is that right? Yeah, so um, it, this is the interesting point when you dig a little bit deeper. So it turns out that BUSD was split into two different things. Mm. So you had the BUSD that was issued by Paxos, and this is the issues. Mm. Um, and they've, the, the New York has said, you've got to stop issuing that. And then Paxos has said, we won't, um, we discontinue that. Um, but Binance was actually bridging that onto other chains, which wasn't going via Paxos. Now, um, this really is the issue of all issues, is are we going to have to sanction U.S. customers from stable coins? Mm. Um, and if we are going to have to do that, then the next stable coin is going to have to think, figure out on-chain KYC, travel rules, um, and all the things that pretty much turn a stable coin into a, a CBDC issued by a private company. Um, so the, it's very important, you know, because it's not quite a case of you could sanction, you could take US out at the exchange centralized level. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as Tether is experiencing, if, if you're, you, you can use Tether in the US, it's registered as a money service business. But, mm. you know, uh, this is an interesting challenge ahead. I got to agree. I don't know. It's going to be a long, drawn out process. And of course, Gary's going to be right in the middle of it. And then uh, lastly, because I know Simon's got things to do today, uh, Voyager. I just received an email from Voyager start, stating to start a Binance account in order to retrieve my assets. This is uh, for U.S. customers. Would you guys recommend that move, being that Binance is having problems too? Like, look, here's what I've done. Because they still have my documentation as living in Texas. And Texas is not an authorized state for Binance U.S., so for me, like they, they say they're going to try to work on a money transmitter license throughout these different states. And uh, if Texas doesn't get it, then they're just going to say, we're going to give you your lump sum in cash. That's really what's going to really down turn out to. So for me, I'm pretty much stuck in, in that one because uh, I left a good amount of crypto on there. And then, of course, with Celsius, who knows what's going to happen with that? I got a nice six figures just sitting there, which will probably get liquidated. So for me, that's what's going to happen. For you, for Binance... I mean, look, this is my personal opinion. I can't vouch for Binance, but so far they're doing, they're still solvents. I haven't seen a problem. They've had a massive outflow as the, they had these different problems that were, that were coming up, as CZ said, it's just FUD, and they were able to weather the storm. Does that mean you should leave your crypto on an exchange? No, it does not. I got these rules, which are right below Simon right now, and one of them is 0% on exchanges, meaning don't leave your crypto on exchanges. So if they do do that, Get an Anna Ledger, get a Trezor, take it off and go from there. Simon, anything to talk about with that one? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I can give you a quick synopsis on the on the Chapter 11. So sure. in Voyager case, obviously, Binance won the bid after FTX blew up and tried to take out Binance in the process. Um, and then Binance took out FTX in the process. Um, and a very complicated, complicated term sheet was sent through. Um, you expect to get approximately 50% of your crypto, but 
the the algorithm that they put together in order to buy back your crypto and put it on another exchange it is very complex um mm. so uh you may end up with 50% of your coins um on binance uh the alternative as rob as uh, rob said is that um they have 6 months to apply for a license if they don't get that license then they're going to sell for your coins uh for cash so um personally uh i would use binance as a mechanism uh for getting my coins off as fast as possible um and the thing that i you know the main thing that i would be concerned about with binance is more if they had a catastrophic 90% collapse of the bnb coin uh, oh, yeah. were they marking that coin to market and was that trying to hide a hole similar to ftx that's the big question do we know the answer to that absolutely no one knows the answer because they don't publish or audit so you can't you actually don't know that's the problem um so it's a risk one would have to take so use it as rob said to try and get your your funds off as fast as possible if you don't want to take that risk then it's cash and you're at the mercy of the markets um depending on what the price is uh when they do that uh yeah. on the celsius side uh, there's actually a court hearing tomorrow uh, where yeah. celsius still a yet to put together a plan 8 months later and i've already given them four different plans uh, throughout <laughs> this whole process uh they also had bids the in court uh, the lawyers kirkland and ellis lied in court saying that none of the bids allowed people to get um their equity or liquid assets and our bid did and it was leaked by tiffany fong um and there was other bids that did as well so literally they got caught lying in court so celsius is a is a real bad actor at this stage and now uh, uh yesterday it hit the docket that a bunch of regulators have all just said um the ucc objected to them extending we had to lobby them all the us trustee representing the department of justice um it, it said you can't extend exclusivity a lot of creditors um and uh, and and now 40 you know mm-hmm. uh, about 18 different regulators said we don't believe you've got a plan we think you're going to run out of money before you actually release a plan um and so they've said the 15th of february is the deadline compare that with blockfi on day 1 they released a plan they're already in the bidding process they're getting ready for that voyager already through the auction genesis gemini they've already negotiated a deal with digital currency group um and celsius still is the only one that doesn't doesn't have a plan so these chapter 11s they've turned out to be the biggest scam i have ever been involved with for protecting companies that have committed untold of fraud um and the lawyers are the ones that get paid essentially what they do in chapter 11 from my experience is the lawyers make it legal to do what SBF did spend client money on lawyers and 100 million dollars later we're told that if you don't release a plan you're going to have to liquidate which we could have done from day one what a scam son of do you hear that do you hear that that's the sound of my blood pressure going way way higher so on that note i will just say to everybody This is uh the video that uh, I was talking about. There's also a link in the description so I put it here. I will post it uh I will pin it to the top of comments and you can also find the description. Check out Simon for more great alpha and follow up on Celsius and things like that. And I got to say Simon I'm right there with you. I'm sad and and disheartened that I ever talked about Celsius and and had the scamster on the show. And with that, that is it. So look, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate you. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, all that good stuff. Go check out Simon. And that's it for today. So everybody, have a good day, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Adioso.